Welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. Please make sure you like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on future content. This video focuses on the calculations based around um, time of flight mass spectrometry, which is particularly useful for the AQA specification. I have made a video on the main stages of mass spectrometry and how the, the principles behind how it works, but this video will only focus on the kinetic energy type calculations and time of flight. First thing then is we must be aware of these two equations, the equation for kinetic energy and the equation for velocity. Now it is worth mentioning that in an exam question you are usually given these two equations, but it certainly doesn't hurt to, to know them. Now, before we even begin to do the calculation, we must be very aware of units and don't make mistakes when carrying out calculations because the kinetic energy must be in joules, usually it is, the mass must be in kilograms, and this is an area where students often make a mistake and they convert to grams. It must be in kilograms. Velocity, meters per second. Distance in meters, again, sometimes we've got to be careful there because we do need to make a conversion. It may be centimeters, and you must keep it in meters. And time will be in seconds. Next thing is to be able to rearrange these equations. As I've said, you are most likely going to be given a form of these two equations but you would be required to rearrange. So kinetic energy can be rearranged to get the mass. It can also be rearranged to get the velocity squared. And velocity would be the square root of 2ke over m. Likewise, rearranging the velocity equation, we could rearrange it to get distance is velocity multiplied by time. We could also rearrange it to get time is distance divided by velocity. So we've got to be confident and comfortable with rearranging and using units before we even begin a question. So let's have a look at how we calculate the mass then, because again, I've said that this is a, an area where students will struggle. So the logic here is, we'll use an example. We're gonna find the mass of one chromium 52 ion. And this is the logic that we're going to use. One mole of chromium 52 would have the mass of 52 grams. I'm gonna convert that into kilograms, which is 0 0.052 kilograms. I'm then gonna use my knowledge that one mole is equal to Avogadro number of ions. And again, if we need this, we will be given it in the question. But again, students tend to know that that number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So one mole has that many ions. So what we can do is we can find the mass of one ion. We can divide 0 0.052, which is the mass of one mole in kilograms, by the number of ions in one mole, which is Avogadro's constant. And we're going to get a very small number, as you would imagine, 8.64 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. That is the mass of one chromium 52 ion. So when we approach these calculation questions, and we're going to look at two past questions in a moment, we must use very clear logical manner. And my advice is um, the question would usually involve two different isotopes um, or two different ions. And things will always be the same in mass spectrometry. So, for example, the distance of the flight tube and the kinetic energy will always remain the same. And other things will change, such as the mass and the velocity of these ions. So I've highlighted there the things in red that can change. So the mass of the isotopes will be different and therefore their velocities. However, the distance they travel and the kinetic energy will always be identical for the two different ions. So what I suggest we do is we kind of split the question in two and we would look at one of the isotopes, in this case isotope X, and we look at isotope Y, two different isotopes. They would have different masses and different velocities and different times, but the distance and kinetic energy would remain the same. So in the middle there, distance and kinetic energy remaining the same. The time for isotope X will be different to isotope Y and the mass of isotope X is different to the mass of isotope Y. Once we've got that basis and we can see the two halves of the question, we can then start to logically approach and make our way to an answer. So here we have a past exam question then. This was worth five marks when this was on an exam. So try and follow as logical pattern. We've got the two isotopes of bromine in this question, 79 and 81. We know that the kinetic energy will be the same for both of them. We know the distance will be the same for both of them but the masses of each will be different and their velocities and the time they take to travel will be different. So what I suggest you do is approach this question as logically as you can. Pause the video now 
and when you're ready to hear the answer, you can unpause the video. So let's start by seeing what information the question's actually given us. As you can see, I've put distance down the bottom there because the question told us the distance was 0.95 metres. We also know we have the two isotopes of bromine. We were given the time for the bromine 79. Because we know the mass numbers, we can work out the mass in grams of both ions using the theory from a couple of slides ago that one mole is 79 grams converted to kilograms divided by Avogadro's. That gives me the mass of one bromine 79. I'll do the same for the bromine 81 and get the mass of one bromine ion. And we've, the whole point of this question, we've been asked to calculate the time for bromine 81. Now, the only place we'll see time is in that velocity distance time. I've rearranged it to get time is distance over velocity. I've got the distance as 0.95, but we don't have the velocity. So we need to find the velocity for bromine 81. And that's going to be the key to answering this question. I can rearrange the kinetic energy formula to get V squared is equal to 2Ke over M. But I, I don't have kinetic energy. I do have the mass of bromine 81, but I don't have the kinetic energy. I do, however, have enough information on the left hand side of the bromine 79 to calculate the kinetic energy. And if I know the kinetic energy on the left hand side, it is the same as the kinetic energy on the right hand side, because kinetic energy is the same for both ions. So let's make my route down the left hand side and calculate the kinetic energy. I'm going to need to calculate velocity first though, which is distance divided by time. We know the distance is 0.95, that doesn't change. We were given the time in the question, so we've got a velocity of 1420 meters per second. I can then use the kinetic energy equation, which is half times the mass times the velocity squared. That gives me a value for the kinetic energy, 1.323 times 10 to the minus 19. I can now bring this across because the kinetic energy is the same on both sides. I can calculate a value now for velocity squared. Once I've got velocity squared, I can square root that to get a value for the velocity of bromine 81. At this point, I can check to see if it feels about right. Does it look right? The velocity is slower for the bromine 81. It's 1403 as opposed to 1420. That does make sense. Heavier isotopes will travel slower and take more time. So I expect my value to be a bigger time. Time is distance over velocity. Distance remains the same. I've now calculated my velocity. It gives me a final answer of 6.77 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. That is the correct answer. Again, you can see it's taken longer and I expect it to take longer because it's a heavier isotope. Next question then. So again, follow a nice logical pattern, have the two different isotopes, pause the video now, and when you're ready to hear the answer, unpause. Okay, so what have we been given in the question then? We've been told that the time for the titanium 49, we've been given the kinetic energy this time, we can find the masses of both of these isotopes, which is I've done there. So where do we approach this? Well, we've been asked to calculate the time for the titanium 47. We do not have the distance. OK, so we don't have the distance. So I think the first thing for us to do is to use the information on the left, because again, we've got more information from the titanium 49. So we're going to use that information to find the distance here of the flight tube. We're going to use velocity squared is equal to two kinetic energy over mass and that's going to give me a value for my velocity on the left hand side. A very large number for velocity squared. Square root that to get my velocity. I can now find the distance of the flight tube because I know the velocity of 49 and I know the time. Multiply those together. I've now got a distance of the flight tube of 1.55 meters. I can now take this across to the other side because the distance is the same for both sides. And I need to divide by the velocity. But again, I don't have the velocity of the 47, so I'm going to have to rearrange my kinetic energy equation to get the velocity because I do have kinetic energy and I do have the mass. So let's carry out that calculation now. I've got velocity squared. Square root that gives me a value for the velocity. At this point, I can pause and check. Does it appear 
it's moving faster than the titanium 49 is that correct yes that that makes sense it's a lighter isotope it will take less time it will travel faster i've got my value now of 9.62 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds it's a shorter time that makes sense it's a lighter isotope and that brings this video to a close so please subscribe please like use the comments feature to ask any questions surrounding this video or any topics that you feel would also be of benefit